Okay, one, two. <laughs> okay, it works. So, hello and welcome. This presentation will be about a mirror that we have built in our local community in Tirana, in Albania. Um, yes, overview, who are we? Uh, we will talk about Open Labs Albania, our community there, uh, Netspace Albania, which is our community as well in Albania, uh, dealing with technical stuff, mirroring in-house server, uh, about the architecture of the mirror, tools and technologies that we have used, how we set up the mirror, and we have a demo. So hopefully it will go all well. <laughs> uh, who am I? So I am... Um, Audona Kolicai, my name is Audona. I am a member of Open Labs Albania since 2019. I've been a community member uh, since 2016. Uh, I joined after I finished my school. Uh, I am an open, big open source enthusiast, I have to say that. Um, I also work as a DevOps engineer for a company which is open source. Uh, I am co-organizer for OSCAD, you can see my shirt, uh, is open source conference in Albania. And last year I was also co-organizer for the OpenSUSE Summit uh, 2022. Also I've been co-organizer for Balkan Festival, which was an event that happened in 2020 with uh, communities like uh, Open Labs Albania, uh, but in Balkans. And I have been part of many events and activities in Open Labs. Um, I am also a pet lover, so that's my precious dog. Um, yes. So, um, I, I'm Ray. I'm a co-founder of Netspace Albania. We are a new community. We just uh, got founded in January of this year. Uh, we aim to focus on more technical stuff and to nurture people, uh, especially beginners and intermediate people to uh, learn about information technology and get into the field. I've, I'm a DevOps engineer at a company called Natural Intelligence. Uh, we deal with data analytics and marketing, sorry. Uh, yeah. And I'm a big fan of everything open source. Uh, I spoke at OSCO last year, and this is the second time I'm speaking at, speaking at a conference. And yeah, I'm, uh, so I'm decent with a keyboard, but I'm better with a grill. And also, as you can see, I, good, I took a very good picture in 2018. I still have it. <laughs> and yeah. <clears throat> okay, about Open Labs Albania. So Open Labs was, co uh, was uh, founded in 2012. It's been more than 10 years now. And it's a non-governmental, non-profit organization that we aim and support free open source technologies, open data technologies, standards, online privacy, and public domain. We have had so many events during the past 10 years. Uh, you can count on them. We have had nine OSCAD editions. Some people here has also been in OSCAD. And we have had also uh, four crypto party editions uh, with different topics. Our main activities and projects are based on uh, Linux. Everything actually is open source since we uh, aim and promote only open source. Um, <laughs> Windows has a very nice place in our, uh, in our organization. If you come by Win uh, in Open Labs, you will, you will see where Windows is. Uh, we have uh, promoted open, um, OpenSUSE there, Wikipedia, LibreOffice, Nextcloud, OpenStreetMaps, and other activities that are uh, in open source. Okay, so as I said, we are a new hackerspace. We have not had a lot of activities yet, except for our uh, weekly workshops where we encourage people to bring their issues they've, they've had throughout the week or things they want to learn, and we try to support them and help them to learn and solve their issues. Um, we aim to support open source as much as we can. Well, basically, I bully everyone who doesn't use Vim, but... Yeah, we try to, <laughs> we love open source, but we are not restricted so much that open labs is. Uh, yeah, uh, as I said, we didn't, uh, we haven't had a lot of activities since we were just founded in January, and for the moment just trying to keep ourselves alive, but uh, we have found that the, our community is growing, and people are very interested to you know, learn about uh, new technologies. We try to inform people about high tech, about Linux, and stuff like that. 
So, metering in-house. People asked why we chose metering in-house. Um, it's actually very simple. We promote open source and we are some tech enthusiasts that decided to do some metering locally and we went for the open source, but more are to come on other distributions. Uh, that was the main reason, but also with the benefits that coming uh, from having a mirror in house. Um, the yeah. Uh, so basically, when we decided that we were going to run an open source mirror, uh, we were reading the guidelines offered by the uh, by the open source how to, and I thought that it is a very good candidate to be run on Kubernetes, as you can see uh, does. Do you guys uh, know the Kubernetes basics? Have you used Kubernetes before? Or should I uh, explain into detail? Okay, so basically, uh, as we understood the guidelines of running an open source emitter, uh, we understood that it is just one uh, HTTP server, HTTP file server with a specific structure that is understood by the zipper client to know where to find and where to pull the files. So that is just a question of running a web server on Kubernetes. I chose to run it as a Kubernetes daemon set. And as for the Kubernetes uh, users out there, you can see that we are not using an ingress controller, but we are exposing this daemon set using a load balancer. This means that every worker node of our Kubernetes cluster We'll be running a copy of the software of the Nginx, basically. We chose Nginx. We'll be running a copy of Nginx. And each copy of Nginx will be mounting the same EFS partition. Well, currently, ah, sorry, I should say something. Because uh, we plan to eventually run this on our local infrastructure using Harvester, Rancher, and use Longhorn as a storage backend. But uh, due to some issues we had with the Harvester and Rancher, we are currently running this infrastructure on AWS. So it is, uh, we are using COPS to provision the cluster, and we are using EFS as a storage backend. EFS is uh, basically just an NFS server managed by AWS. It is nothing special. So each copy of Nginx is mounting this NFS export, the same NFS export, using a read-only many uh, access mode. Uh, we populate this volume using a Kubernetes cron job. It is uh, basically a pod managed by Kubernetes that will run at a specific time using you know, the cron string. Uh, and will run rsync in order to populate the EFS volume. Uh, each node will accept traffic coming from the load balancer and route it internally. So instead of going through kube proxy in order to find the nearest pod, we have forced the node port service specification to route the traffic locally. So if uh, traffic comes from the public to node one, it will resolve to the daemon set pod running on node one. That will basically help us scale better because we will not need to strain the Kubernetes API each time a request comes, but we will resolve it locally within the node. And to some extent, it will also make it a little bit more resilient. And this is uh, just this is pretty standard stuff. It's just uh, how we configure and how we handle secrets. For now, it's just uh, Kubernetes secret that we mount as a, as a secret to the daemon set. But later on, we might uh, move on to using something like HashiCorp Vault or something. Uh, yeah, I actually explained this already. But we found that, uh, we found the idea of using Harvester and Rancher locally, a very interesting idea, because we do not have to care about defining procedures on setting up a Kubernetes cluster. We can let Rancher do all of that for us, and Harvester is, uh, so it basically provides a very stable way to programmatically create uh, infrastructure. 
So we do not need, you know, to create all these complicated cloud init configurations and do any of that. We just have to set up rancher, harvester, some networking, and we can bootstrap uh, Kubernetes clusters by just a click. We can create new node groups by just a click and have, around, uh, have a Kubernetes cluster up and running. And this will take away all the overhead of running local infrastructure, at least we hope. Eventually, it will take away all the overhead of running local infrastructure, and we can treat it just like a cloud that we all know and love. But for now, uh, for the POC, AWS is doing just fine. We have this repository uh, that we are storing the code. How some out on? It is not public yet, I think, but uh, as you can see, I'm, we are using Terraform to manage uh, to manage the infrastructure part, like to provision the EFS, the load balancer, to create the necessary networking for the for the cluster, and here we have the COP specification of the cluster which is uh, pretty standard stuff, actually. And the mirror, we are using, uh, ah, I didn't explain something. We are, here we have cert manager, but we ended up not using it because we are uh, terminating SSL for the moment. In AWS, we are terminating SSL at the load balancer level, but uh, going further into local infrastructure, we plan to terminate it at the Nginx pod, uh, and that is where cert manager comes in because we don't want to manually manage certificates. We will just mount, it, mount them from the secret that cert manager creates. And we are using Helm to, uh, to manage our deployments. And that is basically it from the Git side. How Okay, I'm going to do a short demo. I'm just going to point this. Uh, currently, actually, the repo is in a private subnet, so we'll, you will not be able to find it here at mirror.netspace.al. But uh, to just to see that it's working. I will create a Docker container. Ah, oh, yeah, I will. I will increase the font size. Just to show that it's running, I will. Uh, I just created the Docker container, and I will configure it to use our mirror for the non-OSS updates. Oh. And we can see here, for example, let's take the first one, Discord. Uh, we can see the Discord is in our repos, in our mirror. And if I try to install it now, we'll be able to see that we will be getting Discord from our mirror. Uh, I'm very sorry that we overest vastly overestimated the time it would take us to make this presentation. So we would appreciate it a lot if you have some questions. <laughs> Uh, th this is basically the demo. It will ask us to install a lot of packages, but I will say no, because it's just a Docker container. Yeah, so that's it. Have one more slide. So, 
Um, we are organizing again this year, Oscar 2023, and we would like to invite you all, have you there. Um, the coordinates, you can find them there, is basically Tirana. And also it's on 2 and 3 September, and everything that is about free, liberal open source software and other stuff, you are very welcome to uh, join in our conference. So, uh, questions? Hi, um, I would be curious if you benchmarked your solution also in terms of uh, AWS cost compared to other solutions, let's say running a bunch of E2 instances or using local storage uh, instead of EFS and so on. Did you make some comparisons or why, for instance, did you pick the technology stack you used? Did you expect it to be cheaper? Did you want to run more um, of your own infrastructure inside AWS? What were the, the reasonings, the thoughts behind it? So basically the reasons that I chose the EFS as a storage backend to run this infrastructure was uh, the first one is so I try to make everything as cloud agnostic as possible. I want to take this very same Helm charts that I'm using in this repo currently and when we eventually set up our local harvester and rancher setup, uh, I will I want to install the same Helm charts and I want it to work right away. And as I said, uh, EFS is just NFS, so we can spin up an NFS server with our own storage and work right away. Um, another reason is that using local storage is not very reliable. Uh, in Kubernetes, we want to treat, or at least uh, I always want to treat the nodes that I'm working with as ephemeral. I don't want to rely on a node being up and down to have the application working. Okay, and um, how large is the AWS cost for running the intro? Well, uh, it is too much for a hackerspace, <laughs> I can tell you that. The cluster itself uh, costs not much, actually just about $35 per day. And the EFS, uh, if you do the whole clone, the EFS should cost about $100 per month. But each time you do a full sync, I understand that you will not make a full sync every time, but each time you make a full sync, it should cost, uh, if I do remember correctly, about $400. Okay, thanks a lot. But uh, I did not, when I made these calculations, uh, I did not take into account the data transfer costs. Because if you have real clients, they will be getting data out of uh, out of AWS, and we all know that's that's a lot of money going out. Yeah, exactly. That's why I was wondering about. Yeah. 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 Uh, so one question that's not so serious: uh, Are you sometimes confused uh, with the National Security Agency uh, this year? <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's actually because we are all young people and we try to be as playful as possible. We try to be as friendly as possible. So even when we chose the name, this was, we, we have a flat hierarchy. We let everyone in the community try to, uh, we, we try to give everyone power in the community. And everyone said, no, I want this name because it sounds like NSA. So <laughs> it's the reason we chose it. Okay, great. And yeah. it's also with our governmental because we have something similar and they would probably go for it, but still, we, were, we are daring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they haven't given us the domain yet, nsa.al. <laughs> <laughs> Strange why, I yeah, can't imagine. Uh, yeah, the other question was, uh, how close is your AWS instance in Albania? Actually, I set it up uh, with this talk in mind, so I set it up in Frankfurt. Yeah. Yeah, if I can add something. So this is a prototype and it basically will be on-prem. So everything would be on the hackerspace because that's the, the, the idea. And then that's only temporary for this talk. Yeah.
Hi, again. Hello. So, uh, I think uh, part of my question uh, that I wanted to ask, uh, Ben, I'll ask the similar thing. Uh, it's about uh, why you chose AWS, because the whole point of uh, having a mirror is to bring it closer to home, closer to where your users are. So, if you're building a mirror, then the, you're synchronizing the content on an EFS, which is not local, then pulling that content and serving it to your users sounded like an overkill. But then you answered that this is a prototype. Yeah. So I'm thinking in mind that the, the final product is something like you're going to have your own uh, shared file systems in-house, your Kubernetes clusters, every, everything set up in-house. So then I come to the second part of my question. Uh, a mirror does only one job, like uh, serves files. And uh, the point of the mirror is to know where to get these files and bring the files so that it can serve. I, I'm trying to understand the reasoning to add the complexity of Kubernetes into that. Because uh, think it this way. Uh, a lot of people are doing uh, the mirroring thing in different countries. All we are trying to do is like making mirroring simpler. Here I see that it become, it's becoming more complex. So that's why my question is the reasoning behind. Yeah. Um, well, complexity is reality, right? Uh, for someone who has worked his whole life in IT, has managed hardware, servers, everything, yeah, right. You can just get a rack-mounted server. You can install Linux distribution and put Nginx and hope you're done. Cron job. But um, I, for one, do not have a lot of experience managing hardware. And I do not have a lot of experience with local infrastructure, having hardware in front of you. But uh, I've been working all my life with software. And I understand seeing infrastructure from an engineering standpoint instead of a system administration standpoint. So if I can abstract away all the local hardware and infrastructure stuff, and I can manage everything in software for me, and I, I think that goes for a lot of young people going into software today, it becomes much easier. That makes sense now, because that's, the, for, for me the question was, I come from a system admin background. When I look at things, I try to see why do we have all these abstractions when uh, uh, we can remove that and do only one line script, one Nginx, and the work is done. So th that's why I wanted to understand your reasoning because then you answered, okay, you're thinking from the uh, software perspective and the whole DevOps community are going in that way. and. Uh, Trust me, I don't know at what point they are going to do a U-turn, but I'm hoping they do a U-turn. So, uh, second thing now, uh, sorry, third thing now. So, you said you're going to use it uh, in-house, so having your Kubernetes cluster and all the thing. Uh, then what about storage? You're not going to use EFS. Are you going, planning to do the system admin way of having NFS shared and stuff, or you're going to use something like Ceph or some more advanced storage? We will try. Oh, it's not only just me, right? We have Cleste, for example, yeah, that, also, that also have experience with local hardware. But um, my point is I want to make everything easy to be managed by software. But uh, for to solve this issue, we will set up, uh, we will try to set up Ceph for Longhorn. Longhorn, I think, is uh, our main point. And on top of that, we'll run an NFS share. Klesti will tell you more about it. OK. Uh, hi, I'm Klesti. Uh, I'm part of the hackerspace with Gary. We are the guys of hardware. We have been de dealing with hardware. And uh, to answer your question, uh, we, are, we were looking at Harvester, but we ran into some technical problems. And we couldn't set up uh, in the right time. So Ray said that we are going to push it on AWS just for prototyping. And then we are going to switch back to uh, Harvester. that can be easily man managed by Rancher. And on Harvester, you can hold plug or you can manage everything uh, by GitOps. 
So everything can be managed by software, and uh, everything on Harvester, it's meant to be hot pluggable. So uh, even if you are managing uh, like uh, thousands of uh, hard drives that tend to fail, or SSDs that get a lot, a lot of read and write and are burned, you can just hot plug them. If, as, as soon as your uh, card that manages those uh, drives supports them. And when you set up the harvester, you have the ability to, uh, I don't know if you have to take, take a look at the harvester, or I, I, if you don't, I strongly suggest to take a look. It's still on, on developing stage, uh, but it's production ready. It's production. Yeah, it's production ready and being developed. It needs a lot of requirements to set up at first, but uh, as we spoke yesterday, they said that they are going to lower the, those requirements. When you set up, when when you set it up, you have the abilities to manage your storage and mount your partition as you as you want and manage them. Create uh, EFS and FS, and they, you can ma mount them directly to Kubernetes as PVCs, persistent mounted volumes. That was a supplementary question. Again, uh, thing is, uh, let's say you use Harvester to do all the magic things like I want to use uh, NFS, I want to use Ceph, I want to use all of that. Uh, under the hood, those are scripts that are running and uh, provisioning things. And what happens when something breaks? Who fixes that? We I want to, I, 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 no, but again, you're re uh, for a mirror, you're uh, relying on Harvester, right? So if something breaks, someone needs to be the expert on Harvester, not in terms of just using Harvester, but understanding all the underlying technologies. Harvester is using, for example, NFS for, for something, Ceph for something else. Uh, can you set up Ceph directly and use that, or use NFS, uh, set up NFS directly and use that? My, my, my point about that is, even if you use a, a higher level software, uh, it need, you need to have that low level knowledge of the technology in terms of failure. Okay. And especially if you plan to run a public mirror, because if it fails, What's the plan then? Well, the, we have made a commitment to be experts at Harvester. We have not only uh, chosen Harvester for the public mirror, but we have also chosen Harvester for one of our commercial, commercial projects. So we do not have any other choice, but we will become experts at Harvester. And uh, furthermore, Harvester uses technologies that we are already familiar with, having uh, combined, I think, we are young and we are not uh, seniors, but uh, me and Klesi have combined about eight years of experience in information, information technology, and almost all of that has been with Kubernetes, has been with virtualization, and all the DevOps and sysadmin stuff. So Harvester is right up our alley. So to answer your uh, technical question, uh, requirements. Uh, on Kubernetes, you have uh, monitoring obser uh, observability uh, that you can set up uh, Prometheus or you, uh, on Harvester, they come pre-built in. And when something fails, you can set up also alerting. Uh, also, you have like other monitoring stuff. And on, in all DevOps uh, perspective, when you set up something, you uh, set up first zero trust when you don't trust on security or you don't trust even on hardware. So if that fails, you're going to get an alert, but you are not relying on single point. You don't have a single point of failure. I don't know, as Ray mentioned, he can answer better that. Uh, when he, he said the, the, he's pointing the load balancer into two nodes, if one of the nodes fails, you're going to get an alert, a high alert, or if one of your drives fails, uh, which, which in a right configuration cannot be a, that big of a deal, you will still get an alert. So one of your drives is ten, trying to fail. Yeah, I don't basically, know who has uh, due to, experience. Due to how we architected the system, we do, not have, we do not care at all if one node dies. 
we will get a text message and we can go there the next day or two days later, fix the node that went down. So unless the whole system fails or networking is down, the mirror will, st will still be up. Also, uh, if you can open Ray the Datadog dashboard, so we we I are don't still I don't have the credentials on this PC. I'm sorry. Okay. So we are still monitoring. Uh, yeah. So to try to take it from this kind of view, we have a whole community in Albania, which most of them are DevOps, and we kind of try to automate things. So. Uh, we understand kind of the enthusiasm of the group. That, that's why we kind of chose the technologies and we're moving forward to that direction. We, we have, besides this group here, we have a lot of people that are very interested in the technologies and they are trying to uh, become seniors and stepping out in this field. So, yeah. Do you have any questions? Other questions? Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you.